Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Ditto Fitness. My name is Andre Ditto. Tonight, uh, my guest is Henry Oliveira. Uh, Henry holds a private holistic healing practice as well as works with and for spas, corporations, dance, health and fitness institutions as a corporate instructor slash contractor. Uh, Eastern and we Western massage uh, therapist Henry uh, specializes in uh, chronic conditions using uh, a body, uh, a, a excuse me, a body of a body and energy work, as well as healing meditations and chronic conditions using uh, using his system, therapeutic movement and positional release, a blend of medical qigong dance, salsa, hip hop, improv, jazz and African dance, yoga internal martial arts like Tai Chi and self-massage. Henry incorporates aromatherapy, crystal work, magnetic energy therapy, music as a vibration resonance therapy, using voice and healing sound as well as bell and battery uh, in shamanic capacity when appropriate to achieve a Doppler effect that relaxes the mind uh, and the body and clears negative energy um, which prescribes healing movements and meditations that include visualizations and healing sounds. Uh, Henry is considered a master level medical Qigong energy therapist, medical Qigong uh, healing movement and meditation and martial arts, fitness and self-defense instructor in the areas of Tai Chi, Bagua, uh, Hsing Yi, uh, producing uh, one multi-gold medalist in Tai Chi and Tai Chi pushing hands, um, began his training in martial arts at the tender age of nine, displaying a passion for healing at the age of 12, began formal training at 21, and is a published writer, writer with articles in the Qi Journal and other publications on Tai Chi and Qigong. Henry, welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Andre. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, so please, so um, let's get right into things because there's so so much energy here in a sense, mm. and you got a great background. Talk about thank you. how you got so involved and um, sort of explain how all this gets incorporated sure. in your practice. Well, uh, I think like for many of us, um, many people here in the States got involved with martial arts thanks to Bruce Lee. Yes. Uh, very few people know that Bruce Lee, uh, that uh, Kung Fu, the TV series, was his brainchild. Uh, so uh, that's how I got into martial arts, and that's actually how I got into spiritualism as well through the show. Uh, I was brought up in a, a family uh, that was very deeply religious. My father was a musician. Uh, and I lived in a very bad neighborhood. <laughs> As a matter of fact, here in New York, Hunts Point, which is you know, wow. I don't, yeah, and I you know, I was in the sixties, you know, Fort Apache was at its at its height. <laughs> yes. Uh, so that's how I kind of got involved with that. Uh, the healing portion of it was, you know, again, I was raised in a, in a Catholic family, so you could say that Christ kind of got me involved. And I am, I am, I am a Taoist at, at this point. Okay. Uh, um. Started martial arts, just watching movies and practicing on my own. And, and at about 12 years old, I started to see my friends get injured. And I started to try to do, I guess, n what I know now to be Reiki. Uh, but that's how I, that's how I kind of got involved with that. And music kind of just fell into it. My father was a musician. Uh, and I realized that it really had a very healing effect on people, especially when he played. And he was a salsa musician. Uh, one of the few that was uh, that were being played on the air in the 50s here in New York City. Yeah, nobody knows him now, but in the 50s he was big. Um, his name was Enrique Oliveras. Oh wow! Uh, so does that give you enough, or should I continue? No, that's fine. Okay. So let's uh, let's continue on this vein. Sure. Um, let's talk about you know what what exactly does uh, stuff like uh, vibrational healing do and. Uh, you, in your background, it talks about aromatherapy and crystal work. Now, I'm very familiar with this stuff because mm -hmm. I'm very much into the holistic side of, of life here and uh, being a, uh, a Reiki practitioner myself and being a healer, etc. Um, let's explain it to the audience, and you can go into detail. Um, 
rephrase that question for me, Andre. Okay, sure. So um, talk about your, your sort of your healing modalities. I mean, what does it mean to go to aromatherapy? What is crystal work? What okay. does that mean for people? All right. Uh, what, does, what it means is, well, I think a lot of people don't realize that we are, you know, we're made up of what, 80, 85 percent water? That's correct. Okay. Um, and water it becomes very stagnated. It also, uh, it, it can also take an electrical charge. So essentially, Anytime we deal with somebody, anytime that we listen to music, uh, anytime that we're in a negative environment, we pick that up. And if you just walk the streets, you can see people that have been subjected to, you know, uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to abuse regularly because it really shows on the body, really wears on the body. Uh, so what vibrational work does, and aroma, aromatherapy, aromatherapy triggers uh, old memories, uh, old emotions, uh, and it also leaves you with a very, it, it, it kind of clears all that out. It gives you another starting point, uh, um, uh, sensually, sensationally. Uh, the crystal work, again, uh, we're made up of water. We're actually quite crystallized in ourselves. Okay. So uh, crystals have a negative and a positive charge depending on the crystal. Like, for instance, uh, amethyst is very good for the lungs. Uh, and I found that it really worked. It, it really does work. Uh, so I, I chose, before I went into Shiatsu and Twina and Western Massage, I chose to explore that and finding that it really did work, uh, I continued to incorporate it. I don't use it as much as I used to because I have an array of, of other modalities that, that I can yes. work with that are quick and a bit more effective. Some of this definitely has to do with the belief of the person. If the person does not believe, they're going to, uh, they're going to fight that and, and, and it's not going to work. And even if it does work, they won't recognize it. I see that a lot. Where you know where you do it, you can see that it's working for them, and you can see them resisting it, and say no, this stuff doesn't work, and it works for them, and you can see that they walk out better. But that mentality, they continue it. So what we think, as you well know, mm -hmm. uh, has an effect on the body. What we say has an effect on the body. So all the stuff I do, um, not only tries to eliminate negativity, put the body back in balance, both with manual massage and with the other modalities we spoke about, but more importantly, to reach, uh, uh, to uh, to reboot the mind. Right. So now, how th you brought up a good point: uh, the resistance. Um, which I have encountered myself mm. before. What do you do when you uh, when you find when someone comes to you and say, "Hey, I'd like you to do some energy work on me," and you feel the resistance? What do you do? I mean, how do you get them out of that mode? I I, I explain to them. You know, I, you know, I, I I go through the explanation of saying, "Well, you know, I I can see that this is difficult for you. That you're having. I can see that you're a little bit resistant about it. Do you believe?" And if they say, "Well, I have some doubts." Uh, I explained to them uh, that that because of their doubts, we're only going we're only going to get so much of a result out of it, mm -hmm. and that it, that they really need to that we together really need to kind of do a a, a a revamp of the way they think and their life and how the life has stagnated. Because once we stagnate in our lives, our minds stagnate, and so I tell them, you know, come in with an open mind, just relax and feel what you're going to feel, and we'll work through this together. Oh, that's very interesting. That's great stuff. Let's talk about, um, uh, you have obviously have a very diverse background here. I'm oh, let, let me just run back to that. Sure. And of course, if I see something's not working, I switch it up. Okay, very <laughs> right, good. I've got a lot of tools in the toolbox. <laughs> yes, you do. I just grab another tool. Oh, okay. Um, so um, let's talk about um, uh, a little bit of the uh, Qigong and the martial arts, etc. Sure. Uh, number one, how do you incorporate that? And number two is that, I, I mean, explain what Qigong is. I know what it is, mm. but explain it for the well, audience. Qigong is, a, Qigong is a, a huge umbrella with a lot of <coughs> things hanging from it. The term Qigong actually uh, only came into existence in the 40s. Uh, and uh, Qi is your vital essence, mm -hmm. is your life force. Uh, gong is actually uh, mastery. It's, it's, it's mastery. When, you, right. when, you, when people think of Kung Fu in this country, they think of fighting. Kung Fu just means great art. <laughs> right. So you could be a great chef and you've got great <laughs> Kung Fu. Uh, but so uh, Qigong is really uh, a mindfulness. A mindfulness that you bring to everything that you do. So uh, although you can learn all these different types of movements and breath control and sounds, it really is, I mean, you can do, if you're, if you're a, a, an adept runner, and you can run steadily and keep a nice 
you know, a tranquil uh, 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 body and, and use the breath and the oxygen to keep your body from tensing up, that's Qigong. Uh, but uh, speaking of Qigong as it's commonly known in this country, yes. Um, Qigong is uh, breathing meditations incorporated with movement, uh, and uh, some of the, some some Qigong masters out here do do uh, do um, the vibrational stuff with healing sound work. Um, so really, that's it. The, the The problem that I see with Qigong generally in this country is people. Uh, it's been taught as stationary or single movement things. So it's not although it's qi, although it's Qigong and although it is medicinal, you're not going to get the results that you really want. Now, uh, Yuan Ming Qigong, my teacher, uh, Zhang, uh, Zhang Yuan Ming, uh, his Qigong is the best I've ever seen. Why? Because he uses the body to articulate things. Now, for instance, the simple move here, you know, not only is it a great African dance move, <laughs> 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 right. and, and, if, and if you look at West Side Story, on the opening act, is, <laughs> you'll see her do this, ah, that's an African dance move! Uh, but it also massages the heart and lungs. Right. Movements to the left and right. In Tai Chi, they have wave hands like clouds. Yes. It massages the epigastrum, the liver, the gallbladder, the stomach, uh, the spleen. Um, and movements like so, if you bring your hands down and rotate the shoulders, it massages the intestines. And then we go on you know, to the articulation of the vertebra. Uh, so that's the uniqueness of the Tai Chi that I know. So it was obviously, I've been dancing since I was a kid, so it was a great match for me. Uh, and it really, it, it, you know, I can't say enough about it. I can't say enough about That's it. That's great. My name is Andre Ditto. You're watching Ditto Fitness. Uh, tonight, my guest is Henry Oliveira. Uh, he is a sort of a healing master in a sense. And uh, he has a very diverse background in uh, holistic healing. He's involved with Tai Chi. He is a, uh, does Qigong, etc. I mean, and just so many modalities that he uses. And we have him on the show here tonight. So Henry, let's let, let's continue on this vein here in a sense. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about when someone comes to you and says, uh, I'm having issues, uh, I can't figure it out. What do you do? What, what, what do you tell them? What do uh, you well, the first thing I do, and, and the, the terrible thing about doing the things that I do is I can't walk down the street without diagnosing everybody. <laughs> 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 I mean, I, I, okay. I, I see somebody walking to me, the first thing I do is I, I, I look at how their feet are positioned and what their gait is doing and how their body is collapsed or expanded. Uh, so that's the first order of business is diagnosis. I diagnose the body. Uh, there's facial diagnosis, hand diagnosis, foot diagnosis. So that's really my first order of business. Does, does that answer your question? Sure, and, but uh, let's take it a step further, and then uh, what, I mean, what do you tell them? Well, what do you, what do you do in a sense that, like, when they say, well, you know, this has been bothering me and that's been bothering me? Well, it, it's hard. The reason, it's, the reason it's hard to answer that question mm -hmm. is, is because it, my response uh, my response is dependent on what they're coming in with. Okay. Okay. Uh, so if somebody says to me, well, I'm coming in and I have a, a, a pain in my arm, and right. so the next thing I say is, well, where is the pain running down? Can you show me? Is it localized or is it running down someplace? And if they say it's localized, well, now I look not only at anatomy, but also at, at the acupuncture meridian chart. And the two, uh, the, the two modalities linked together are just phenomenal, uh, both in fitness and, and, and in... Uh, and in, and in uh, healing. So, if they, may I? Of course. If they say to me, well, it hurts when I move my arm like this, and they say, well, it, well show me where it hurts, and they'll go, oh, it's right here. The next thing I'll do is I'll say, how's your digestion? And nine out of ten times I'll hear, it's not very good, I've been having trouble going, or if, if they say to me, my digestion is good, I go, how are your lungs? Well, I've had a little, and one of the two are always a hit. Why? Hmm. Because that channel mm -hmm. is a large intestine channel connected not only to the lungs, and then the lungs are connected to the kidneys. So if I got both misses on those, then I say, what's, the, what's your, what's your uh, family history? Is there a history of renal failure? Is there uh, hair loss? Any of these things are indicative of, of uh, kidney yin deficiency, kidney yang deficiency, like that. And then I'll explain to them, this is what's going on on the eastern side. This is what's going on on the western side, and which one is predominant uh, in, in healing for you is this one or that one. However, we are going to address both because no. because Go some ahead. some people yes. are just not some people aren't in their bodies. You know, some people are born 
and they, they haven't quite settled in. You know? right. <laughs> they haven't right. quite settled into this world yet. Uh, so, you know, what I find is people that, that are not really uh, uh, in their bodies, they need more pain. So I will go in and I will get them involved like that. And then when I see them start to relax in the area and they start to relax, then I'll go into the more sensitive stuff, the, uh, the more subtle stuff. Oh, very good. That's great. Um, so let's, <coughs> excuse me, let's talk about uh, body movement as you were kind of moving around before, et cetera. What does that do for energy in the body? What does that do to sort of uh, liven someone up in a sense? And uh, how does it make them feel? I mean, what does it do for them? Well, as I said before, uh, uh, you know, I'd say, and, and I don't think I'm being generous when I say this, I th I'd say that about 98% of all illness is due to stagnation. Stagnated water is, well, you've seen bogs and you've seen puddles that have been sitting there, you know, stuff festers, and, and that's what happens with the body. Now, if you're eating poorly and you're not exercising or your job doesn't allow you the benefit to move around, that's stagnated water. That's stagnated blood. So, so, uh, so my job you know, in, in teaching body movement at all is to get that water moving again. Mm -hmm. Now, now the, now the muscles are going to get uh, a their, their, pro uh, their appropriate oxygen and mm -hmm. blood and lymph and what have you. And these movements like this, what happens is the organs tend to stick together if you're not moving around. Uh, the lungs will stick to, uh, to the cage, uh, the, the, you know, the, the, uh, the, the gallbladder will start to stick to the liver. So all this, all, all this gets all that moving again. It also gets the vertebra of the spine to open and close. Now you have to understand, everything's attached to the spine. Yes. <laughs> you know? yes. So you're not taking care of your spine, you're not taking care of your back, you're not taking care of your bones, you're going you know, to have some major trouble. So what this does is that, that it releases all the, all the, um, all the um, organs that are stuck, it opens and closes and clears the, the, the spine, uh, it gets your breathing back in order, uh, and, and, and then if you start to incorporate sound uh, in, in the practice as well, if I have you doing like something as simple as, hey, ha, well, actually wake you up. Wow. So between all those things, uh, people usually come out feeling more awake, more, more aware, more cleared. But once again, the problem is they go back into their environment, back into that stagnated place, and they trigger that all over again. So, so then they'll go, well, how can I keep this going? Now we have to look at life coaching. Oh, very good. Right, now okay. we have to look at changing your lifestyle. Very interesting. Um, <clears throat> if we may, let's spend a couple of minutes on, uh, you mentioned a few minutes ago about digestion and how that connects to all of this. Mm -hmm. What, uh, um, in what, what way can people sort of change that? I mean, what, what kind of a diet or what do you think is appropriate in a sense for people who, um, want to just change their lifestyle and get more involved in this aspect of their life? Once again, that's a tough answer, uh, a, a tough mm -hmm. question to answer because everybody's different. And if, oh, you look at, if you look at Chinese medicine and you look at the five elements, you, and, you know, I look at a person and I say, well, what kind of a person is this? Are they a wood person? Are they a, a water person? Mm -hmm. Are they a metal person? Uh, and then, and then I, I kind of go from there. Re uh, repeat your question because I might have lost you. So what I was uh, saying is, how do people um, change. sort of change their okay. diet right. Right. in order to sort of um, not make this work, but incorporate it with their diet? Well, you know, generally, generally, a, a, a not a vegan diet. A vegan diet is really not all that great. Okay. You know? um, and again, it depends on the body type. Mm -hmm. uh, but generally, what I ask people to do is, is have more greens. You know, what, what we know to do in this country, more greens, mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, um, more things like garlic and onions and peppers because that kind of clears and cleans the blood. It helps the liver do its job. Yes. Uh, uh, and again, it depends on the person. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. if, a, if a person uh, you know, doesn't have any energy uh, and, and they're vegan, I'm gonna, I, I'll ask them, and they're telling me I'm having plenty of protein, I'm having plenty of nuts and beans and like that, then I'll say maybe you want to consider adding some, you know, some animal flesh to your diet. Uh, but I'm not, a big, I'm not a big advocate of eating only animal flesh and potatoes. Okay. And that really is the big thing here. Everybody, oh, what are we going to have for vegetables? Potato and salad. Well, <laughs> neither one of them are really vegetables. <laughs> you, know, right? Right. you know, Now, if you have romaine lettuce, now you're a little bit better. Right. But really, the thing to 
do. I mean, broccoli has a lot of protein in it. Yes. You know, so that's what I look at. I, I look at the person's needs. I look at their body type, and I look at what's going on with them, and I look at the lifestyle that they're leading, and then we'll sit and we'll s and we'll look at what they like and what they don't like, and if what they don't like is what they need, then we look at how that can be cooked in a way that it's digestible for them, that, it's, that, that, they'll, that they'll at least tolerate it. Okay. <laughs> so let's, if we can, briefly, um, and I'm familiar with Chinese medicine, so um, touch on the, f you mentioned the five elements. Five elements, Can yeah. you just briefly touch on them? Uh, the five elements, um, well, we're made up of five elements. Now, people say, how are we made up of wood? Well, we're fibrous. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> and trees are fibrous. Uh, but um, um, all five of these elements are in the body. Okay? Fire, we create heat. That's correct. Water, we're made up of 80-something percent water. Uh, wood, did I say wood? Yeah, as I said, we're fibrous. Yes. Fire, I, I already said that. Metal. Now, metal goes with the lungs and, and the lungs and the large intestine. And um, you know, I'm going to I'm going to make a big jump here and say, and say that the only thing I can think of as a reason why they would call lung and large intestine metal is if you've ever had a severe lung infection and you mm -hmm. couldn't cough, you know, and you cough and you get that metal taste, that iron taste from blood coming up with the cough. Ooh, yeah, that's metal. Yes, you know, it makes sense to me. Right? <laughs> uh, what did I miss? Fire, wood, water. Metal, what's the last one? Fire, wood, metal, water. I said water, fire, metal. I can't think of the other okay. one. Yeah. That's okay. If I write it down, I can do <laughs> it. <laughs> um, so just, and just if you can quickly summarize, um, uh, just how can we be sort of more aware of the, of, of the elements that we're uh, that are in our body. I mean, what, I, what I, can we do? A study, you know, study it. You know, take, you know, it, it's well worth the time, I, even if you just spend the time on your own to do it. I mean, I, I certainly advocate, you know, taking classes. I, I, I think people get get into a, a routine and they stop growing. Uh, learning is very, very important. The mind has to learn. If it doesn't learn, that's when everything starts to collapse. So just so, you know, you can get on the internet and punch in the five element theory, and it'll give you the whole thing. And you can see, you know, some of these charts actually have the the attach, you know, the attachments like whether it's lung and large intestine, stomach and stomach and spleen, at earth. Mm -hmm. That's what I that's what I missed. Uh, and it'll and it'll actually tell you what foods are good for you. Right. Uh, you can buy books on facial diagnosis, on hand diagnosis. You can find that on the internet. So you know, the internet is a great resource to learn this stuff. Yeah. But, but you have to be committed. You know, you have to be committed to you have to be committed to change. Great. So. Henry, in, in sort of in summary, I guess, um, what would you like to share with the audience? I mean, we've covered a lot of ground yeah, in the yeah. time, which is wonderful, and uh, I love getting a lot of information out to people. So, um, in summary, I mean, is there anything else you'd like to share with the audience as far as your practice, as far as, you know, how they can incorporate uh, these modalities, anything of that nature? Well, you know, the, uh, the first thing I, I want to say is change. Don't be afraid of change. Try not to cling to things. It's very difficult. I know we all want to uh, have a sense of security, but it's false. There is nothing secure. And as soon as you become, to, as soon as you get to a place where you can realize that and stop limiting yourself, I mean, uh, everybody wants to, most people want to have one job, one thing, I do five different, six different things because it keeps me moving. It's, it prevents stagnation. So That's change. Right. Follow your dreams. Don't let anybody tell you you can't do this, including heal. Anything, and try to remove all negativity from your life. Uh, you know, negative people, negative diet, negative thoughts. Very important. Anything that, that, that stops you from moving forward, eliminate that from your life. Oh, that's excellent advice. That's really uh, terrific. Um, so, Henry, if people want to find you, get in touch with you, please. Oh, okay. Well, currently I'm, I'm uh, working out of Arlington, Massachusetts. 
I'm coming uh, into New York every two weeks to work at the Theosophical Society here in Manhattan. Uh, you can I'm all over the internet, so mm -hmm. you can just punch me in. Um, you can reach me by phone, 781-859-8097. Uh, or my website, uh, bioenergymassagemovement.com, uh, and those are the best ways to get me. And as I said, I'm going to be here every two weeks, so uh, I'm pretty well. I'm starting to get pretty well known here. So make your appointments <laughs> early. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> make great. them early. Um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Andre Ditto. You've been watching Ditto Fitness. Uh, my guest has been uh, Henry Oliveira. Uh, the guy is a, a wealth of information. Uh, he has shared quite a bit with us tonight, and um, just he's shared his information. You'll find him out there. And um, I just want to say that I, I'm very happy to have Henry on the show tonight. Well, thank and, you. Um, I would like to say to please just keep watching the show and uh, we'll have some uh, more guests on that will have some great information to share with you. Um, once again, uh, please uh, just pay attention to what your body's telling you. Yes. Pay, pay, just pay attention to what uh the you know your body is giving giving out to you and what you, obviously what you put in your body is what you'll get out of it as i've said so many times so anyway um i i just want to uh, encourage people to just uh, have some safe holidays and just watch what you're doing over the holidays there and don't go overboard and and just kind of you know relax have a good time and don't worry about things so once again, thank you very much for uh, tuning in, and uh, please continue to watch the show. You'll find me on MNN Thursday nights at 8.30 on the Lifestyle Channel, Channel 2. Thank you very much.